So if you haven't heard of Bike Yoke, it's a German brand that crafts replacement shock yokes exclusively for specialized bikes. Beyond their shock yokes, they also have made a name for themselves with their reliable dropper posts with their innovative built-in air purge design. Bike Yoke's latest creation is this thing, the Sagma saddle, which incorporates two elastomers into their saddle rail attachments. In this video, I'm gonna share all of the details and share my thoughts on why it works really well for bike packing. Let's do it. So before we dive into it, I just wanna mention that this video is partially supported by Surly Bikes. Surly, they make serious steel bikes for people that don't take themselves too seriously. They make bikes that are versatile and durable. They can be dressed up or down for bike packing, commuting, ATBing, gravel grinding, or really whatever you call fun on two wheels. With 15 original dirt-friendly platforms, they offer something that fits just about anyone for any style of riding. So for more on Surly, make sure to click this card right here or find a link below. So the Sagma is available in various versions, including the Sagma Lite and the Sagma Lite Carbon, which comes without shock absorbers, and the Sagma and Sagma Carbon. I ended up testing the Sagma Carbon, which is in my hands right here, in the 130 millimeter width version, but it's also available in 142 millimeter widths. Given my narrow seat bone widths, I decided to go with the narrow 130 millimeter version, and I ended up weighing it, and it came out to 197 grams. Measuring seat bones offers a general starting point, but its accuracy is definitely debatable. Sit bone measurements reliability depends on your bike setup. Your upright or hunched over position affects where sit bones actually contact the saddle. During long rides, you're consistently adjusting your position, which means you're rarely in one place consistently. Therefore, saddle testing is certainly the best approach. Um, I worked at a bike shop which offered a saddle rental program. Uh, which is definitely a good option. And I urge you all to check in with your local bike shop and ask if they provide that. In my experience, narrow saddles reduce bulk while wider and more padded ones tend to cause chafing, especially with a narrow seat bone width like me. However, saddle preferences are highly personal. What works for me may not work for you. As I mentioned, the saddle measures to 130 millimeters in width and 242 millimeters in length. It's short, stubby, and looks a little weird, but who cares if it makes your butt happy, right? It is generously cushioned, much more so than my usual preference. Bike Yoke incorporates ID Beads Foam, a formula designed to dampen vibrations and conform to the rider's anatomy, reducing pressure on sensitive areas for enhanced comfort and performance. The saddle's body is integrated into a carbon reinforced shell with a PU coating on top. The uh, standout feature here is these things, these interchangeable elastomers, which enable lateral movement of the saddle to effectively dampen vibrations, allowing the saddle to flex and absorb um, when pedaling over rough terrain. So out of the box, the saddle uh, includes two normal elastomers, one soft and one hard option to fine tune the system to your liking. Swapping out the elastomers is really straightforward and the design is actually pretty darn neat with the carbon saddle rail screwing down into each elastomer with two T25 bolts on each side. The elastomers are affixed to the saddle using two more T25 bolts for each elastomer. Conveniently, the shock absorbers have um, little labels on it for easy identification. H for hard, R for regular, and S for soft. Although the swapping process might be slightly bothersome, it is fun to experiment with different combinations. However, it is worth noting that this does introduce uh, additional potential points of failure, something to consider when assembling your repair kit. All right, so the Sagma definitely has a lot going on, but how does it perform on the ride? So I ended up using it a few times on day rides before embarking on a three-day bikepacking trip this spring. By the end of the first day, I was experiencing some chafing in some hot spots, pretty normal for a new saddle. The second day, it started sooner and ended even worse than day one. So I braced myself for a potential very uncomfortable third day. Surprisingly, when I hopped on the saddle on day three, it felt great. There were no odd pressure points or irritations like day one and two, which was quite unexpected. Typically, saddle discomfort tends to worsen throughout the trip. So I was thinking, how did this happen? 
well, maybe it was a coincidence and my body just adapted to the saddle, or the ID beads foam needed those first two days to conform to my anatomy. Whatever the reason, since that day, I haven't encountered any major discomfort issues with the saddle over many day rides and bike packing trips this summer. I've used it with moderately thick chamois, uh, but I've also discovered that it works really well and remains comfortable even with those club ride level one minimal chamois or simply wool boxer briefs. Yeah, so assessing the elastomer's advantages can be challenging, but they undeniably have an impact. So despite the saddle's seemingly rigid nature, Without weight on it, I definitely noticed flex in the elastomers when I was riding, especially laterally. So this flex became noticeable during demanding climbs on rough trails when I needed to shift my weight to maneuver the bike. And it even felt like it helped distribute my weight faster from side to side. And because I was not using a dropper post on my Atso Fenrir tie, the extra cushion was very welcome on descents. While the Sagma does not provide as much flex or I guess cushion as say that 20 millimeter E-Silk uh, seat post, it does effectively dampen vibrations from small bumps. My preferred configuration was to have that hard elastomer in the rear and a regular one up front, offering a good balance of lateral flex and comfort. The soft option, however, introduced much more unwanted side-to-side -side movement, especially when placed in the rear. Uh, while some of you may like that, I was definitely not a fan of that movement. But the beauty here is the ability to experiment and discover what works best for you. So another notable feature is the saddle's shorter length, which definitely enhances a little bit more maneuverability around the saddle. So overall, considering saddle preferences are highly personal, the Sagma presents a unique and nearly customizable choice to cater to individual needs. While its fit and shape may not suit everyone, I was pleasantly surprised with how well it complemented my anatomy or maybe adapted to my riding style. And once I got over that brief break-in period, I found the saddle to be remarkably comfortable even on rides lasting over eight hours. So I ended up using the saddle mostly with a rack during my bikepacking trips. However, I did test it on a regular ride with a seat pack secured by those nylon straps and buckles, and it performed well. It's important to note that since the weight is primarily supported by the saddle rails in this configuration, it doesn't really affect the elastomers as much as my body weight does. However, there's likely to be increased pressure on that lower section of that rear elastomer due to the seat bag kind of pressing down when tightened. And of course, the carbon saddle rails might be more sensitive to wear, so the the aluminum version might be the best option if you are going to use it with a seat pack. Now, as far as carbon versus aluminum saddle rails, I often find that carbon offers a bit more stiffness, which can be a bit harsh. Still, paired with the give of this saddle in multiple spots, it provided an excellent balance and allowed good support through my pedal stroke. That said, I did not try the aluminum version of this saddle. The aluminum version comes in at a claimed weight of 220 grams and comes in at 139 USD. The carbon version comes in at 169 USD. So it's a bit more expensive than your standard saddle, but also offers a little bit more than your standard saddle. So what are your thoughts on the Bike Yoke Sagma saddle? Let me know in the comment section below. And if you like what you saw in this video and haven't already done so, definitely hit that subscribe button and notification bell. And if you want to help support all the work we do here at bikepacking.com, including original routes and in-depth reviews like this one, consider becoming a member of the Bikepacking Collective. More information can be found in the top right corner or in the link below. As always, thank you all so much for watching and until next time further.